He spends most days in his wheelchair, staring out the window or at the TV. His friends no longer visit and his girlfriend has moved on with her life. To keep him company during the day, his family has hired a sitter. She talks to him, feeds him and washes him. His mother doesn't want him to be alone. But Nicholas Chow Johnson is alone. He doesn't recognize anyone. He can't talk. And although he can hear, it's doubtful that he understands what's being said. He's been this way since October 20th of 2001. That's the day Harry Hiscock and two teenagers viciously attacked Nicholas on Lamson Street in Esquimalt, British Columbia, just after 3 a.m. If Nicholas remembers what happened to him that morning, we don't know. What we do know is that he can't talk, walk, or care for himself. He's permanently disabled, and he's likely to live this way for another 50 years. When police arrived on the scene, Nicholas was close to death. His skull was so badly damaged that no one thought he could pull through. News of the attack outraged the people of Victoria, for they had not forgotten the attack on Rena Verk four years earlier. They wondered how this could happen again in quiet Victoria. What provoked a group of teens to attack an unarmed man and leave him to die on the cold pavement? While Nicholas fought for his life, the story of what happened that early morning slowly began to unfold. After months of police interviews, what became clear was that Nicholas nearly died all because of a red jacket. This red jacket, which is still in the possession of the Victoria Police Department. It's tattered now, but it wasn't the morning Nicholas met up with Harry Hiscock and a group of teens. They saw the red jacket and assumed Nicholas was a member of a rival gang known as the Bloods. But he wasn't. He was shoved and taunted, and in the end, Harry wrapped his hand in a blue bandana and punched Nicholas in the head. He fell and struck the pavement with a loud bang. Six years later, Nicholas remains paralyzed down his right side and blind in one eye. His home now is a rehab hospital in Toronto where he shares a ward with three others. Nicholas's dad has accepted his son's fate, but for the mother, Grace, the pain only grows worse. You see, she still can't forgive herself for sending Nicholas the money to buy the red jacket. One way she copes with the pain is by ensuring Nicholas receives the best care possible and allowing her son some simple pleasures, such as his music sessions with Danny. Should I fix it? Should I fix it? Your turn. Your turn. And as for Harry Hiscock, he's serving an eight-year jail sentence. While in jail, Harry's taken anger management programs and the intensive treatment program for violent offenders. He's also worked towards getting his high school diploma. The two teenagers that also attacked Nicholas were given two-year sentences. When Harry applied for day and full parole in 2005, it was denied. The National Parole Board believed he posed a high risk to violently reoffend. The board was told that when Harry was 13 years old, a psychological assessment found him to be an angry and willful youth over whom his parents had little control. Harry avoided responsibility, was frequently truant, acted aggressively towards others, and showed little empathy. The psychologist felt that Harry posed a risk to cause serious harm to another person. Years later, Harry did cause serious harm to another person, Nicholas Chow Johnson.